Hello and welcome to my movie review for Tenet. Um, I went to see this at the cinema last night, it was very exciting. I've not been to the cinema for six months before this. The last film I saw was The Hunt in March and now fast forward six months in September, I finally saw another film. It was extremely, extremely cool for me. I literally, The minute I sat down in that recliner chair, I was like, ah, oh, the cinema. I mean, I could have been watching a film with just I don't know, Donald Trump just dancing on stage going la 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 for, for an hour and a half and I still would have been like, ah, oh, the cinema. But, but thankfully I did have a good film to watch. It was uh, the latest film from Christopher Nolan. I was racking my brains on the way down there actually, um, or what the names of the Nolan films I've seen in the past and literally every Nolan film I've seen has been good. The Batman trilogy, Inception, Interstellar and a few others. I've not seen all of his movies but every one I have seen has been extremely good and I think this one is actually... It's got some similar themes to films like Interstellar with the time travel and um, Inception was basically about this uh, military technology that allowed you to get into people's consciousness. And this film, again, Tenet, is about a piece of military technology, a thriller set around that kind of starting point, except in this instance, it was time travel, which kind of feeds back to Interstellar. So it's almost as if the studio guy said, look, we need you to write another film just like those ones. Can you do it? And, and he's gone away. Christopher Nolan and actually done it and come up with this one because it's extremely good. I was really impressed. Um, it's got some interesting rules when it comes to the time travel part. I mean, I don't want to say too much about the plot because I'm conscious that the film has just come out. But every film that deals in time travel has its own kind of interpretation of time travel rules. And Christopher Nolan's come up with this rule for his film, which is like no other rule I've seen in any other time travel type film. And I won't say what it is because you should discover it for yourself near the start of this movie. But when you do, you'll be like, Ooh, this could be interesting to see how this plays out. And it, and it is. It's everything that's good about this movie, the spectacle, the action sequences, all come from the craziness of this kind of self-imposed rule of time travel that is implemented into this film. And it's really, really original. But I'm not surprised the movie was expensive because I just don't think you could have made this film 20 years ago, 15, 10 years ago. It's just it's just an extremely well-made modern film with just, I'm not even sure where the CGI ends and where it begins. It's just really, really good. Um, but it's very com complicated, very complex. It, it's a two and a half hour film, but I think somebody else could have edited it. It would have been three hours if they just made it a bit slow. It, it really bangs along really quickly. And there were a lot of times I just wanted to pause it and, and just think to myself, oh, okay, so what happened there? What? But the film's motoring along and then you, you just pass that point. And I really came out, I was walking home and I was thinking, I'm going to have to watch that again because there were certain bits that I didn't quite understand or bits that I missed. And I think that'll frustrate some people. That's probably the only sort of criticism I've got is that there are certain people who like to watch a film and have everything wrapped up in black and white. They know what happened and they, they want to go home, wake up the next day and not even think about the film because it was all done the previous night. I mean... I'm not like that. I, I'm perfectly happy to go away with a few unanswered questions and look them up the next day on Google and you know, do a bit of research, maybe watch the film again. And I, I enjoy that kind of stuff, but not everybody's like that. So this film may leave some people frustrated because it is complicated. The plot really speeds along. There's a bit of complicated science involved. Um, there's kind of time travel loops and bits you have to try and piece together from earlier parts of the movie. It's sort of like that, but... Certainly, I think a lot of people have a lot of fun, you know, talking about this film and, and tying together all the weird loose ends and questions that would come out of it. But it, it was really, really good. Um, acting was absolutely first rate. I, I I don't know the name of the lead actor in this film, um, but he is extremely good. I, I should have researched his name before the video, to be honest. But he was very impressive, very convincing in the physical side of, of the role, very convincing as a, as a sort of secret agent type person who would have the intelligence to try and wrap his head around everything going on um robert pattinson is in this movie the new batman i've not seen robert pattinson in a movie since uh i got dragged to see a twilight film in 2010 it was twilight eclipse and i hated that man that day i hated that film um true story even the hot dog machine didn't work the day that i went to watch twilight eclipse it was just horrible day and um i didn't want to see another film with him ever again as far as i was concerned but all these years later i finally seen him in another movie and he was really really good he's a really good actor very charismatic 
Um, I'm absolutely convinced now he'll make a good Batman, and it's just a, a complete turnaround from the last time I saw this guy ten years ago. Um, some other good performances as well. There's, um, I think it's a, her name is Elizabeth Debicki who plays this kind of abused wife in the movie. Was very good as well. I didn't realise until after the movie that Kenneth Branagh plays the main bad guy in Tenet. Um, I, maybe I've just not seen enough films with him in, but because I'm surprised I wouldn't have recognised him. A very famous actor, but he was very good as well. Um, so on the whole, I really, really enjoyed this film. It's just, I'm not sure where I would place it against all the other Christopher Nolan films, but it, it's right up there and he always does good movies. So I think if you're going to release a box set of all these kind of standalone films, that you, you just place this nicely next to Interstellar and Inception. I think you really would. So as a first film back at the cinema for me, I, I was absolutely happy that this was this film. It was really, really good. So um, I think if the Midnight Woodsman is to swing his review axe, as I'm going to now, I would definitely say seal of approval. So go see it. Cheerio.